All right, so in this lesson, we are continuing to compare numbers and put them in the right order and determine if one number is less than another. But the difference today is that we're going to be looking at all different forms of numbers, um, fractions and decimals, and um, you'll see that comparing fractions and decimals can sometimes be a little bit tricky. So that's what we're going to uh, take a look at today. So go ahead and let's just quickly review the answers uh, for the do now. So uh, here are the answers to the do now. Um, just check them over again and make sure you understand where all of those came from. And after you do that, you can go ahead to the next page. All right, take a look at, uh, we're going to compare a decimal and a fraction here. So we're looking at 0 0.6 and 5 eighths. And, you know, it's certainly not obvious which one is uh, smaller or larger. And so I want you to see if you can figure it out. So take a minute and um, make your decision and come back and check out uh, what the answer is. So go ahead and pause the video and then check back in a little bit. So what I did here was I converted the fraction to a decimal in order to more easily compare them. And through that process, I got 0.625. And then I noticed that 0.625 is greater than 0.6. So that's how I did that problem. So we're going to look a little bit more uh, at comparing numbers and some tips to help you compare numbers in the next couple of slides. So go ahead and turn to the next page. So just like I did on the last problem, one way to compare rational numbers is to convert them. Convert them all into the same form. And usually decimals is easiest, and uh, that's what I did on the last problem, and I think it is uh, a good direction to go in. But let's think a little bit about um, comparing decimals, because that can be a little tricky. So if you're comparing 6.123 and 6.124, you know, you're going to work your way down the line to find comparable numbers. So they both have sixes, so that doesn't really help us. We keep working to the right. They both have ones. That doesn't really help us. They both have twos. That doesn't really help us. And then we come to the third decimal digit, the fourth digit um, overall, and we have a three and a four. And of course, that's going to tell us that this number is the greater number, right? So we're going to open up to the big number. So here's the thing. Longer decimals are not always greater. Okay, it's tempting to do that. You see this big long number and think that has to be greater. But if you compare, they both have threes. But the next number we compare, this one has a two, but this one has a four. So that's going to make this greater. All right, go ahead and move on to the next page, please. Now, there are some situations where comparing fractions is actually the easier uh, thing to do. But um, it's really difficult to compare fractions that have different numerators and denominators. But if they have the same of the numerator or the same denominator, then you have something you can work with. So let's take a look at this first example. If fractions have the same denominator, and that's the bottom number, compare which one has the greater numerator. So whichever one has the greater numerator is the larger number. So they both have the same whole number, so we don't really have to worry about that. Again, we're just trying to compare them. And then they have the same denominator, so that's a good thing. So we look at the top, and whichever number has the higher numerator that's going to be your larger number. So because the 4 is greater than 3, we know that that number is going to be greater. Okay? Now, let's do the other situation, though. If you have 
the same numerator, the same top, then you look at the denominator and whoever has the larger denominator is the smaller number. So I'm going to add a little bit of notes here. Something like a large denominator often leads to a smaller number. So take a look at these two fractions. Note that they both have the same whole number, so we don't have to worry about that. They have the same numerator, but they have different denominators. So the one with the larger denominator is smaller. So in this case, the right-hand side will be the larger number, again, because the larger denominator makes this whole number smaller than this number. All right, so um, take a look at the next four problems. Just some quick practice. Go ahead and pause the video, do these real quickly, and then come back and check to see how you did. All right, check these answers out. Um, I circled the number that let me know uh, which of these were greater. So because we had the same denominators, this greater numerator let me know this number was greater. Again, same denominators, this number is greater, so it made me know the whole fraction was greater. Here we have the same numerators, so the smaller number makes for the larger overall number. Here, again, we have the same numerators, so the smaller denominator makes for a larger number overall. All right, make sure you got those down, and then go ahead and turn to the next page, please. So here are some uh, practice problems that, um, in some cases, involve comparing fractions to decimals. So we'll use the technique of, um, if necessary, converting the fraction uh, to a decimal in order to make the comparison. So take a look at this first example. Is 1.7 greater than 1.5? Again, not obvious when you just look at it, but if you think about what 1 and 1 half is, so we have the 1. If we convert the fraction to a decimal, that's going to give us 1.5. So when I compare the 7 and the 5, that tells me indeed that 1.7 is greater. Um, so go ahead and do the rest of these problems. Pause the video, and uh, when you're done, stop back and see how you did. All right, check out these answers. Um, I want to specifically talk about number two. So you could convert this to a decimal, but just knowing that 10 divided by 6, I know this number is going to be greater than 1, and your decimal here is less than 1, so I don't have to do too much work to figure out that this is the greater number. Um, note these two are equal. Don't let this one trick you. This has a zero in there, which you're comparing to the seven, which makes this number greater. Um, and number five, I think, was pretty straightforward. Okay, go ahead and turn to the next page, please. These are just some more practice problems, so once again, pause the video, work on these, and then come back and check uh, your answers. All right, check out these answers. Um, let me talk about a couple of these. So for number two, I decide to do the division, and you know this goes on and on forever, but this six goes with this six, which is fine, but then as I keep doing the division, I keep getting sixes, but that six compares to that one, so that makes this number greater. 
Uh, three is pretty straightforward. Four, you want to be careful with this one. So one third in decimal is 1.33333. And really think 1.3 is the same as 1.30. So we're comparing a zero with a three, and that makes one and one third greater. And then on the last one, I did a different kind of trick. I wanted to uh, have either the same numerator or same denominator because we don't have that situation here. So one way to do this is I multiplied the top and the bottom by 2 to get an equivalent fraction of 6 eighths. Now we have equivalent denominators, so I can look at the numerator, and the larger numerator tells me that this number is larger. You could also convert both of these to decimals, and you will um, get the same answer. So that's another tip here is if it's easy to uh, create an equivalent fraction that has the same numerator or same denominator as your other number you're comparing with, then that might be a good way to go. All right, uh, go ahead and turn to the next page, please. So go ahead and uh, use whatever technique you would like to put these numbers in order and pause the video, give this a shot, and then come back and see how you did. All right, check these answers out. Um, I converted them all to decimals. I think that was probably the best way to go about doing this. Um, even though we have some common denominators and common numerators, when you have the other decimals mixed in, it's still kind of hard to figure out. So I converted them all to decimals and came up with this answer. All right, go ahead and uh, go to the next page, please. So here is the video assessment. Um, you don't have to use the number line, but you you might find that helpful. And go ahead and do these problems. And then when you finish, do the challenge problem that's on the back if you have time. And if you finish those, then uh, you can begin to work on your homework. And let me know if you have any questions.